save your campaign energy, save your web rewards. We have two events coming up this week that you maybe wanted to save all your energy for. Also, two new farmable characters coming this week and a massive nerf to one character. That and all of your mailbag questions on this video, guys. And if you're ready for that, you know what to do. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Alley flying. Happy, happy Monday, Valley Club and all the Valley Maniacs. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the channel. I am Valley Flying, and in this channel, we talk all about Marvel Strike Force, at least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button if you want more great content on this channel. Also, once in a while, we post some other random videos like we did this morning with my jujitsu competition. I've been competing, or I've been practicing jujitsu for three and a half years now. Did my fifth competition this weekend so if you want to check that out uh you can check that out and then all my other competitions are in the, on the channel as well but that's not what you're hearing in this video for you're here for marvel strike force campaign energy why should you be saving why should you be saving your web rewards we got two events coming up this week we're going to talk all about those the two farmable characters and potentially three depending on how you define farmable there's a massive nerf what does this mean we're talking all about that. Let's go take a look at the latest blog post and these events coming up. So the first event is a pretty simple event. To X a thief for Phantom X. And that is the new debonair trait. So get your debonair characters ready. Uh, they don't look that difficult to get or difficult to pass. Uh, if Especially based on the last heroic event that we had. So this shouldn't be that difficult if you're a longer time player. If you're more of a newer player, mid game player, you may struggle with this, as, at least at the heroic difficulty. But some of the other difficulties should be easy for to get a lot of character shards for Phantom X. Now this is going on right now. This A Force of Nature event where you have to spend your ISO 8 energy with all of your alliance mates. This is the second time we've had this during this patch. Uh, very similar. And yeah, this should be, if you guys did it before with your alliance, you should have no problem doing it again. Now, this is the complicated event. This is starting tomorrow for Sister Grim, AKA Nico Minoru. So May 24th, 5 p.m. We got a few different things going on with this event. This is kind of like the Wong event where you have a lot of different things going on that you need to grind for. So what do you need to grind for for this one? Well, you need to battle an alliance war. You're getting more points for using A-Force and even more points for using these geared up characters. So that is a that is uh, something you need to prepare for if you don't have your A-Force built up. Winning in raids with the X-Men. So this is a very important one. Is your alliance going to drop down into the Greek race so that you can use all characters? Or will you stick in the fours and then maybe get your X-Men wins from Doom in the mutant sections? Uh, let me know what you think I'm doing. I think it's actually a good idea to go down in the Gamma raids, the Greek raids, to a lower level. And I believe that it's difficulty three where you could use any character. Difficulty four and above, I believe, is where you have to start using these restricted characters. But lower difficulties, no restrictions. This is what we may do. I'm going to speak with my alliance leaders and hopefully uh, do this because a lot of the points for the raid seasons are got through the Doom raids, not as much through the Gamma raids. So I don't think there's too much loss, especially if a lot of other alliances are doing this. All right. Uh, that is that. Now, this is another grindy Blitz event. So get ready to grind. There's a 48-hour Blitz repeats two additional times. And yeah, if you're getting more points for winning Young Avengers. Now, this is the big one, though. This is why you need to save your campaign energy. Don't use any... <coughs> excuse me. Don't use any refreshes don't use your web rewards right now save those if we go into the game if we go into my game we'll see that uh there's a lot of those web rewards that are saved but yeah spending campaign energy or a one point for campaign energy spent and during the seven day event ten thousand points that is a lot of energy that you would need to spend over a thousand energy per day not 2,000, so it's not super, super crazy, but pretty crazy. I don't know if everybody's going to be able to get all of these rewards, but might as well get a head start in it right now. Save your energy right now. All right, so that is what is coming up. We also have these two uh, farmable characters. We have a new strike pass coming up this week as well, but two farmable characters. The first is Shang-Chi, rightfully moved out of that Blitz Orb. He should have done that earlier this month when Silver Samurai went there, but now it looks like Shang-Chi is going to be farmable. And if Silver Samurai has that 10% drop rate in that Blitz Orb, 
considering all the blitz currency, all the blitz grinding that we have to doing, do you think that that makes Silver Samurai farmable now? So that chew just from this blitz edition, this is definitely another farmable character in Doc Ock. So definitely two, potentially three farmable characters, depending on how you far, uh, how you uh, define that blitz orb. Is that farmable? or is it not? I, I think that is still unfarmable, but that is very, very uh, questionable for a lot of players. Doc Ock becoming a permanent legendary character, indefinitely available for events. Everybody level 25 and higher can unlock Doc Ock if you have the correct characters. Uh, company, this update will reduction in Doc Ock star unlock from five to six stars. That is very, very good. And now let's talk about the dirty nerf to Rogue. Her special ability gloves off at an energy cost of two out of two. The actual cost is six out of six. So this is a big nerf for her. Is this gonna make a big difference in Cosmic Crucible? Probably not. This is a big difference for the raids though, where that low two out of two cooldown would have been helpful for a lot of the nodes. Now, I think you could still use her. She's still gonna be a good character. Not all the nodes though. So maybe one node, kind of like an Omega Red type character, you use her in one node, she should be fine. Use her in multiple nodes, still will struggle though. So that is what this did. It basically nerfed the mutant section of Doom Raids. I'm not sure if they have another team that they want to be the Doom solution to mutant, or if it's supposed to be Axeman with these hybrids, or we're, or maybe we're supposed to struggle like we do in tech. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this rogue nerf. This is a pretty big nerf. She's still a good character, but not this OP, super strong meta character that uh, she was once, but when this special was two out of two. But without further ado, first question of the week. You do use your arena credits for, I think it's what do you use your arena credits for? Do you stockpile them or use them for training materials when there is not a character you're going for? I just I just hoard them. I don't do anything with them right now. Let's go into game. I'll show you. I got a lot of arena currency stocked up right now. All of these characters are at seven stars. I think this is a bad value, so I don't buy these training modules. And Dagger is a very good character, but yeah, I've opened a few of these. I don't get a lot of Dagger shards, so I'm just kind of waiting right now so the Dagger moves into its increased uh, cost, and then uh, I'll start buying the Dagger shards. All right, so I don't do anything with the arena credits right now. As you can see, I'm just stockpiling all the credits. Uh, once in a while, you know, if it's late at night and I'm like, oh, I need some Dagger shards, I might open a few arena orbs, take it down to maybe 30 thousand or so just so that when the new character goes in there i'll have enough to buy that character but yeah once in a while i'll open these but most of the time i do nothing and usually it's late at night when i'm bored and i have nothing to do all right uh let's go back to the questions hello just a hint Warning, depending on whether you like it or not, there is a new button in the mails tab above the daily rewards, one that you have unread mails. It's called something like read and claim. Yeah, it's read and claim all, and it opens all the unread raid rewards, mails, and claims the rewards in them instantly without warning, which can be very good or very bad, depending if you are accidentally clicking the button or intentionally clicking the button. If you're intentionally clicking it, I think that's an awesome thing, but, it does leave a lot of uh, scariness out there because you could accidentally click this and claim all the rewards that you may not want to claim, like your web rewards, which you should be saving for this event that is coming up for Nico Minoru. All right, so this is this is the tab that he's talking about right here. If we go and move this to the top here, the daily rewards right there above that is this button right here read and claim all very very uh dangerous unless you're meaning to use it so don't accidentally click this guys be very very careful we've heard customer service responses that they're not giving refunds when people accidentally click stuff so this is one they're probably not going to give refunds because it's stuff that you're trying to claim anyway so be careful warning warning right now p.s thank you and uh for letting for your help with letting the devs know about the bug yeah so i i gave it to them i gave them your player id and we'll see what happens hopefully some good stuff all right what's up brother i think this is a bug on the chosen one event milestone 10 never got that t1 ion or fragments i got proof of everything and sent a ticket yeah this was a bug this was reported in the envoy chat on day one uh, I'm not sure if anything's been said publicly, but I hopefully they will address this. Just just give out another T1 Ion Orb. That is not that much currency. Um, yeah, give it to everybody, because I know a lot of players uh, missed it. I know some players didn't. I am not sure if I did or not. 
But uh, yeah, that, that, that is a reported bug, my brother. Hey, Valley, been a minute since I posted, but still keeping up with your content. DD5 question for you. Not ready for the global nodes yet, but plan was to take Secret Avengers, Doom, Sabretooth. But Sabretooth, seven red, seven yellow. Oh my goodness, a seven red Sabretooth is still waiting on his augmented molecular cloth pieces. I've been, uh, I've actually had enough to take up Wong. Five yellow, five red to gear 16 without messing up too much of my mystics. All right. That, I think, is the better choice. Eternals are done, and I've still got Strange, Supreme, and MILF. Man, you got both of them. Or are you waiting? I still got time for Strange, Supreme, and MILF. All right, all right. Um, yeah, I guess I guess considering that, you could do Mystics. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where you are after all these Cosmic Crucible battles and all these rewards went out, but uh, I know that's helped me. Uh, I have planned to take Omega Red to the legendary notes, hence why I was going to take Saber to the gear 16. I want to screw up my weapon, X Heroes for Hires Counter. Since Darkhold is already me uh, meta currently, would it be better to take Wand to gear 16 before Saber Tooth? Uh, if I get to those nodes before getting Sabretooth gear, or should I wait for Sabretooth? Sorry for the wall attacks. That'd be a simple question, but more of a detail than I thought. All right, so if I were you, I would go for Wong. The reason is. Wong is an arena character right now. He's going to be valuable in any mode that an arena team would be, like Cosmic Crucible or War or Pocket Dimension or Tower Mode or anything like that. Wong is going to be a good value. Sabretooth, he'll be good on Weapon X team. He might be good on a few maybe Marauders teams, maybe some Mutant teams if you're using him outside of the Weapon X team. It's very good since his rework, and you got that seven star on him, but I don't think he's necessary. You could always take him up afterwards once you get that molecular cloth and and put a, he's a very cheap character. So you could you could pretty much take him up anytime with that teal augmented gear. But I would go Wong first and then Sabretooth. I've actually taken in Sabretooth just because he was super cheap. Um, I don't think you can go wrong if you have that molecular cloth, but if you have that molecular, if you don't. I would probably go Wong, especially since your Mystic's already done. So my vote, go Wong right now. Definitely go Milf. You may want to do a different one than Strange Supreme if you don't have those pieces, though. But yeah, so Wong is going to be a lot more value outside, at least for me. If 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 what I'm saying, you're using these characters differently, and maybe you're getting a lot more use out of Sabretooth than Wong, then maybe go Sabretooth. Basically. Whatever you're gonna get more value outside of Dark Dimension, that is a character that I would recommend taking into Dark Dimension because once you're done with it, and you may struggle, but once you're done with it, you're done. Or the second time, you're done, unless you really want those borders around your name. All right, Gra Valley, greetings from Boston, brother. Greetings back from Texas, my brother. Based on RNG, I have enough bio Teo gear that my fifth for Legendary will either be Black Bolt or Invisible Woman. I'm leaning towards Black Bolt because he's used in a famous Scourge event. Do you agree he's better to use the gear on? So. He's a better character. You got the Scourge event. I use Invisible Woman nowhere. The only argument for Invisible Woman is that she's cheaper. So if you're looking for the most cost-effective mode uh, or the most cost-effective character, it's going to be Invisible Woman. And there may be an argument because of the barrier that she provides clearing off those negative effects. She may actually be better in Dark Dimension herself. But once you're done with it, Black Bolt still can be a problem for a lot of characters. He just recently got a small minor rework, or maybe I'm remembering that wrong. I know Yo-Yo and Quake got one. I'm, Black Bolt may or may not have got one, but um, yeah, he's a good character. He's a Scourge character, so you're going to get double the value, especially when Rogue comes back. You're going to place him on War Defense or Crucible Defense or uh, potentially have a use for him in Pocket Dimension. So I would go Black Bolt. Invisible Woman doesn't have a lot of value for me right now. Even though Black Bolt's a little more expensive, it's going to take a little more time. At least it's not re resources that are wasted. At least it's resources going to a character that you're going to use later on. And that's always my thought, guys. You invest it for Dark Dimension, the characters that you're going to use later on, unless they're super cheap, like a Stitcher or a Sabretooth or something like that. Hey, Valley, greetings from Singapore. Do you know how long a season of the Milestone lasts? This scope mentioned it before. I recently went to Milestone 2 Orbs and noticed all the characters I had in seven stars was wondering when the milestone will it be next season. So with these milestone orbs, normally what they do is milestone one is all the year one characters. Milestone two is all the year two characters. We just got that milestone three orb in there. And that is the, oh, actually, uh, no, 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 that's, that's the legacy. I'm excuse me. The milestone two, it has been there for a long time. This That's the one with Emma Frost. I, I was getting confused. The legacy orbs are the ones for the years. The milestone orbs are the ones that has Symbiote Spider-Man, 
and Emma Frost. That has been there for so long. It was supposed to be seasonal. You're right. It said we're not doing these milestone two orbs anymore. We're doing seasonal orbs for now. Well, it has been over a year. That means four seasons have passed and we still have the same old milestone two orb. Who knows? This may be something like the farm billet of characters that Scopely just forgot. They forgot to switch up the orbs, forgot to take Emma out. She's not even in the meta anymore, so I don't know why they're keeping her. I don't think this is going to drive up sales by keeping her in there. So I think they forgot. So whenever they remember, we'll get an announcement, and then we'll maybe get a, new, a milestone three orb. It is it is enough time. It is, Emma's been in there for so long. All right, greetings from Maryland, brother. Hey, Valley, I was wondering, what ISO do you put in the reworked Wakandan team? Uh, I don't think I switched my ISO. Let's Let's go look right now. This is not a recommendation. This is just an answer to your question. This, and your question was, what do I have on them? Not what is the best one. But uh, I think for, for at least Shuri, you're going to want to put uh, this fortifier on her. We got this on uh, ISO 8 level 3 because she is a Doom Raid character. The, the rest of them, I, I just left whatever was on there. So Raiders, sure. I don't know if that's the best one for him. Uh, Wakandas are kind of my set it and forget it team in Crucible. I don't want to build up these characters, but I know it's going to be annoying for anybody that uh, tries to battle me. So yeah, I'm placing them on defense. Uh, Okoye, she's got that striker tag there. I think that striker tag is the proper one for her. I'm not sure what to do with Black Panther. He used to have this Raider one, kept it on him. And I'm not sure if that is the best one. Striker could be a good one as well. If he's getting a, a lot of additional kills, getting a lot of assists from those kills, you could trigger his passive. So I have Raider on, but Striker may be a better one. And Mbaku, he has that healer tag on him. Fortifier may be a little better. Healer may be a little better. He is the protector. So I don't think you want him for the, uh, for the Striker, or Skirmisher, and Raider. I think Healer or Protector is the better, or the Fortifier, excuse me, is the better one for Mbaku. But uh, that is what I have on there. That was the question, not what is the best for the Wakandans. If you have some better choices than the Wakandans, let me know. But uh, that is what I have on there right now, brother. Hello, brother. Mr. Sinister is one of my favorite characters, and I really like his clone mechanic. Yeah, it's a fun mechanic. It's the unique one in the game. He was the MVP in DD3 and DD4, but now that he can't make a clone of Rogue, that's being able to use full energy and he's power crept in stats. Would taking him to gear 16 be a waste of teal gear, or do you still use see use in promoting him? I'm torn on pulling the trigger gear 16. Mine is seven red stars. So there was a argument to be made for him, not just for war defense, because obviously the rework war defense marauders is a very tough team. Not a meta team, but they're a tough team. There was an argument before about using him in arena because he was cloning Morgan LaFay. That was before Morgan got her red stars, though. That team has not been as effective, at least for me. Let me know if you guys are still having success with that Emma-Sinister combo with the Eternals in Arena. That hasn't worked for me for a while. So if he has value there in Arena for you, I would say it could be worth it going up to Gear 16. But yeah, as uh, the Rogue thing, a little less. Now, he can clone her, but yeah, clones of this character have reduced max health, so they're going to die earlier, reduced speeds, they're going to be slower, and they can't reach maximum ability levels, so it's like not having the T4s in them, at least, especially if you have that T4 in Mr. Sinister, so yeah, you can still clone them, but they're just not going to be good, so uh, if you're using Mr. Sinister in Arena, or have some use outside of War Defense for Mr. Sinister right now, I would say yes, bring him to gear 16, take him into Dark Dimension 5. If you have no use for him outside of War Defense, and there's 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 a lot of good other mutant characters that you could take into Dark Dimension 5, so I wouldn't bring him up to gear 16 for that. If you just have a lot of teal gear left around, you already have Dormammu at max, and you're just like, who should I bring up? Sure, sure. If you like Sinister and you like the mechanic, even if he's not in a meta, it's going to add some fun for you because you like this clone mechanic, then do it. It's going to be a stronger clone. But if you're if you're not in Dark Dimension 5 yet, don't have Dormammu, I would wait, especially if you don't have another use for Mr. Sinister. Hope that helps, brother. All right. Hey, Valley Hope, all is well with you, brother. I just finished DD4. Now we're starting to build for DD5. One character I'm thinking about building, not sure, is Multiple Man. I'm thinking his dupes can keep the battles longer. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I, I went into City, and I just... 
I did not take multiple events, so I don't have a first-hand experience. This is all based on what I'm thinking of his kit, what value he adds. He's going to add a lot of protection. Uh, you may be getting some characters attacking some of his dupes instead of one of your valuable characters. But if you bring in multiple men, that means you're not bringing in another character. And like I said, for Dark Dimension 5, he may be good for Dark Dimension 5. I, I don't see it, but I could be wrong on that. But where are you using him after? Maybe on War Offense with your X Factor, but outside of that, if you don't have a use for him, I would recommend against putting in multiple men. If you do have another use for him, then yeah, do it because you're going to get more value, not just for those two runs of Dark Dimension 5. So that's that's always my thoughts in bringing in characters Dark Dimension 5. Make sure they have some value for later and not just for Dark Dimensions. Uh, greetings from Chicago, my brother, my MSF brother. What is up, my MSF brother? Got to ask you, do you think this game, MSF, and should ever be put on gaming consoles? Of course, there's a feature where I can uh, screen mirror onto my TV, but I still need to use it on my phone. Help me with this, Valley. You're my only hope. Send me a link for a t-shirt, will you? All right, so there is a link for a t-shirt. It's down in the description. The T Public is where all this cool Valley merch is. And yeah, it's, it's in the description of every video. So check out the description there. Now, of course, uh, should this be played on a gaming console? Sure. Now, personally, that's not something that I would do or benefit me because I don't really play console games. Normally, I'm playing on my phone. I just don't have time to sit down and watch TV and play a console and put all my attention there. So that's why I've been gaming on my mobile phone so I could be distracted and still game and game effectively while being distracted. So it wouldn't help, it wouldn't benefit or hurt me directly, but I actually, I think it would benefit me directly by if it's introduced on consoles, having more players come to the game and have a more robust community. The thing is, it, it takes a lot of development costs to put things on Xbox and PlayStation and PC. Scopely, Boundless, they seem to have trouble just managing this game and, and keeping this game free of bugs in its current state. I, I, I As cool as it would be, and uh, I would like expanding to players, I just have very little faith that they do this correctly. So I would say if it was a different gaming company, sure, it would be awesome. But based on the history of Boundless and Marvel Strike Force, uh, this could cause a lot of problems. So I know you want it, brother, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's probably not gonna good just because of uh, the errors that Boundless never catches in their awesome QA department. All right, uh, greetings, Valet. Thanks for answering all the questions I put up here in the past. I try, my brother. Here's some more. When do you think we could see another level of daily challenges for Teal Gear on a, or a Sim All button? Our daily challenges. All right, when will we see it? I don't know, man. This is Scopely, and uh, we just we just found out a couple weeks ago that they just forgot to make a lot of these characters farmable. I mean, we would we would put announcements in an Envoy chat and like, hey, Cerebro, it's the first Wednesday of the month. We haven't had an announcement of formal character. And then like a few hours later, there's an announcement on Twitter. Hey, the character, uh, we forgot. It is this character that's going to be formable this month. So I think that I think they really forgot about all these formal characters, which means they also forgot about adding more challenges. So when they raise the level cap, every time they raise the level cap is when I think they should raise the level of challenges. Give us a new difficulty because we need more resources. So they're overdue. We're overdue for one. We have an 80 to 85 level cap increase. Nothing. No new challenges. No more resources. Or I guess over time they added resources in different places. But no a significant place in one place like the challenges to do that. So uh, when is it happening? When do I think it's happening? I'm going to go super optimistic here and say next patch. <laughs> When is it likely to happen? Probably next year, two years down the road. But I'll say uh, I would hope for next patch. There's an upgrade button in War near the top when viewing a room. It's been there for a while since I think either War was added to game way back since the rework. Any idea of those this is? So there was talk of adding upgrades to rooms in War at one point. I don't know if it was just data mines or if that was said publicly and they were thinking of it. I don't think anything like final was ever announced though. There was no testing of this. So it may be for some plans that got scrapped, honestly. I think they had plans to do that, like the leagues for war and the leagues for RTA. 
actually the leaks for rta the leaks for war are working but yeah it, it seems like they had a plan going on and uh they they didn't go with it this event tab in rta that i'm pretty sure has been there since added rta was added to the game any idea what's going on there yeah so i think they had some future plans like they did with the leagues in rta that just did not catch on people didn't like the game mode so they scrapped that they said they wanted to fix rta make it a play uh, enjoyable gaming experience before they added leagues and all this other stuff and never got there they never were able to fix it so yeah i, I think that's just a, a dead tab that uh, you could forget about do you think there should be a new home screen option for rework of sorts the events menu for us to be able to replay old events that we don't have access to anymore or minimal rewards um even if there's no rewards i think i think we should be able to play these events unlimited times for no rewards uh the reason i'm thinking they may not do that maybe it gives them server lag i know there's already a lot of lag in the server uh, this is this, this is a very fragile framework that Marvel Strike Force runs on. So this is um, yeah, they, they, they could do this. I mean, we it would be good. I would like to do this as long as it's all client side and it's not affecting their servers. I'm, I'm sure there is a way they could do it client side, especially if it's for no rewards. But I'd like I'd love it. I'd love to see that. All right, let's move this up. Hello, brother Valley flying from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm just wondering, do you think Scopely in the future will make an XP or for all the level 85 uh cap commanders because doing my daily still grants me xp that do nothing but a fun thing for people to grind their daily is just an idea no no they won't do that that is a player friendly idea brother zenton this is boundless that we're talking about they don't do stuff that's player friendly we gotta fight them for that we gotta we gotta complain before we get that stuff so no we just all that experience is going to waste it's, it's going nowhere until the new level cap increases so that that's that's what i think i mean I, I always expect the worst from Scopely. So when they do something good, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm like, ah, oh, this is good. But yeah, I'm always expecting the worst. For, uh, they, they probably will give nothing. But if they do, I'll be very, very happy. This is a good idea. But this is too friendly for Scopely. You got to remember what game we're playing, brother. All right, greetings from Hayward, California. What is up, my brother? Hope everything's good with you, brother. I noticed you and Drew are pretty ripped. Uh, can you share some health tips for a chunky commander like myself? Thanks, Valley. Go, Warriors. Hulk fist bump for you, my brother. So I can't speak for Drew. I don't know what the heck he does with his workouts or nutrition. I can just speak for myself. And I think one of the big things, I, I don't like doing cardio. And uh, where I get a lot of my cardio is from jujitsu. So when I was just lifting, I was I was kind of chunky myself. I was also focused a little more on strength. Now I'm focused a little more on flexibility. So uh, I think the thing with working out there is just challenge yourself push yourself you know maybe maybe a very minimal level for someone else but uh, work up to something that's challenging for you maybe not level, like level 10 but whatever would be maybe a five or six as far as difficulty level especially if you're just starting up get some exercise exercise on a daily basis whatever that you could commit to uh doing consistently something that you enjoy that is what i recommend now as far as nutrition uh that's something that changed for me as well as i got older started getting more stomach problems so uh if i eat bad or eat a lot the next day i feel like crap so uh one of the reasons that i kind of got ripped is because i can't really eat bad because if i choose to i'm like oh this is cool but the next day i feel like crap and maybe even two or three days so i kind of have to eat healthy and not uh not do too many cheat meals and deep fried stuff and bad stuff so i kind of avoid some of these uh bad foods but the other thing that i think is very important to avoid is sugar sugar is so bad especially in its processed form without being in a fruit or vegetable with this fiber and stuff like that so avoid processed sugar refined sugar if you can't avoid alcohol avoid that as well i think those are the two big ones that you should avoid and, and limit your fried foods as much as possible uh water sleep i think all those things are very very good but just just find something that you like as far as exercise find all the healthy foods that you like eat a lot of those healthy foods i think most people know what's healthy what's unhealthy all the unhealthy foods that you like eat them very little all the unhealthy foods that you don't like don't eat them at all i mean keep it simple do the stuff that you like that's good avoid the stuff that you like that's bad and just keep doing that stuff sleep very important hydration very important 
and that is it also hitting the subscribe button very important as well if you enjoy these videos we do these every week if you want to get your question potentially featured make sure you're a member of the discord the discord link is down below make sure you go to the mailbag channel leave your question there and we answer them every mailbag monday ladies and gentlemen thank you for stopping by hope this helps for you hope this uh, was entertaining for you and share this with your lion space guys thank you for watching if you made it this far you might as well subscribe because we got a lot more videos coming up hit that thumbs up button hit that notification bell as well so you know as soon as a new video goes up there's links down below and yes check them out they support the channel give me a hulk fist bump before you go have a great rest of your day and i'll see you tomorrow valley flying out i'll see you on the stream with the valley club in the morning